Rightio, so this is what the lawn looks like. It's had a little bit of a scalp, mainly because I'm an idiot. I accidentally set the mower to 11 mil instead of 15. And as you can see, started to scalp it. I was thinking that maybe the rear roller was out of alignment on the mower, but yeah. This just basically will show you what will happen if you don't have a level lawn and you start cutting too low. Because remember at 15 mil, it looked pretty good. There was maybe a couple of imperfections, but not really. Dropped it down to 11 and check it out. Check that out. So you can see where it's just cutting in to the soil. Um, looks like it's not sitting evenly, but it's just because there's dips and holes and it's not level. So something to keep in mind with if you want to start cutting low, you really need to focus on your level. This is, a, this is the example. So today we're going to scalp this back down. <laughs> Yay. Um, but that's because we're going to be doing some perennial ryegrass. Uh, really looking forward to that. Done a little experiment out the front to see how well it will germinate. And yeah, pretty good. Learned a little bit from that. So I've never done this before. So yeah. Everyone seems to be doing ryegrass this winter, so I'm on board because it means I get to mow through winter. And as you remember, last year, you know, this just, just goes totally brown. This lawn cannot handle our winter here, so yeah, we'll get stuck into that. And yeah, be relatively simple. So this is basically what I'm going to need to do this. Um, yeah, shout out to Ben at Lawn Tips. He managed to hook me up with some of this grass. Uh, seed research of Oregon, the perennial rye and the SR4660ST. Yeah. So like I said, I did that at the front. I did it at three kilos per hundred, maybe a little bit more, three and a half kilos per hundred, and I reckon it was a little bit thin. So probably it'd be all right if you already had a ryegrass lawn and you just wanted to try and thicken it back up. But because this is cooch, um, I'm going to go a bit heavier. What I'm thinking is if I leave any of this leaf or most of the leaf exposed like this and just verticut it and then seed it, um, I'm gonna end up with nice lush ryegrass. Then I'm gonna have all the dead dormant leaf uh, sitting there, which is gonna draw away from the fact that I've got this nice green there. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna try and scalp this back a bit and get rid of a lot of the leaf. Just so then what is left that does go dormant and looks brown, just won't be as much there and then the rye will pop, look a bit better, and I'll go a little bit heavier. Um, I'll go a little bit heavier on the rate of overseeding, just so I can look a bit thicker. So I think, yeah, removing that, I'm really gonna need to thicken it up. So basically what I'll do up the top here is I'm going to scalp it back, um, put the seed down, add a little bit of soil wetter and some fertilizer, top dress it with a little bit of sand, rub it all in, and then you know you'll see in practice how i'm going to do the rest of the lawn then i'll just put on a bit of a time lapse thing run through the rest of the lawn and um, you'll see it that way One here obviously way more aggressive I might just quickly mow them pick it all up then I'll be able to see what's there which one I'm gonna go with yo see the the lines that the scarifiers made look a bit faint but you can see them the groomer doesn't seem to have done that as well probably because it just doesn't go down as deep um, yeah but the problem is, when I use that scarifier like that, when I use a scarifier like that, it pulls up a bit of dirt. Then I don't want to have to run the 
the cylinder mower over that because I don't want to be hacking into the dirt with my blades. So then I run over it with the rotary to pick up the dirt and then mow it flat again to nip off all the little uh, bits of crown and that that stick up. That's a lot of mowing. Um, so I'm thinking I might run the scarifier over a green bit, then see if I can rotary mow it to pick up all the dirt, then cut it with the Scotty, cut it low, see if I get the same effect with that. It'll just literally cut out a whole mowing cycle. Like I said, I've never done this before, just learning, so it's just gonna take a bit of trial and error, and then I'll, um, yeah, just slowly get better at it the more I do it. It doesn't seem to be um, putting those scores in to the ground, like the track. I guess I can go a little bit deeper. I think I'll just do that. At the end of the day, I'll broom it all in, the seed and blast it with water and just spend a bit of time mucking around trying to get it down. That's all I can do. So I'm happy with that. So the process I'll follow is scalp with the cylinder mower down to seven mil, scarify with the 46, mow it up with a rotary, tree, then apply the seed and the soil wetter and some fertilizer, a little bit of sand, rub it in, good to go. <laughs> Took me a while to get there, but I'm happy with that. So as I said before, if I want to mow my, if I want to mow this ryegrass at about 15 mil, I can't have my lawn sitting at, you know, 11 or 12 mil, this dormant stuff, because you're just gonna see it so easily. So I wanna get it right down, and then cr then just create enough um, area above that seven mil for the ryegrass to spread out and, and branch out and have leaf. So then I should be able to see less and less of the dormant grass. That's just my theory. Um, yeah, I don't know, if this could be totally wrong. And you, I don't know, you all tell me that, so. <laughs> all right, back to it. Take forever. Alrighty, so this little area here is about 17 square meters. So I'm gonna use about one kilo. Right, so the seed's down. It takes a little while with that drop seeder, but um, it works, and you, then you know it's really consistent. You, because of the colour of this, you can barely you can barely tell where the seed is. But yeah, um, now as you might have noticed, I'm wearing my nice new hat from the Lawn Hub. The Lawn Hub were nice enough to supply me with a couple of tubs of um, stuff here, a little bit of fertiliser, and some granular soil wetter, a hat, a stubby holder, and a couple of liquid things. So. Yeah, really big shout out to Clint and Mudgy and Max at the Lawn Hub. Yeah, I really do appreciate that. They sent this stuff up for me to use. Uh, and I know, I sort of like the idea of what Clint's doing down at the Lawn Hub there of just getting um, good quality products out to people at a reasonable price. Because yeah, as you, as, if you're into your lawn, you probably know that the stuff can get pretty expensive pretty quick. Mm. Yeah, just remember you can sort of, you don't have to stick with getting exactly the same products and shop around try different things try this gear here try some stuff from the Bunnings um, buy some ultra expensive high-grade professional stuff um, and I reckon you'll find it's probably all relatively similar except like the real 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 cheap nasty stuff but yeah so shout out to these guys um, for giving me this stuff I really do appreciate it I think it's absolutely awesome Adelaide based company so yeah support your local SA great heaps good and all that we'll put this put some of this stuff down um, then I will, uh, yeah, water it in. So yeah, we'll give this a little bit of a water in, sort of like forcefully to um, push the seed down into the, into the canopy. And yeah, that'll basically be that. Might give it a real light dusting with the Real light dusting with some sand, but other than that, I'll just keep up on the irrigation. I'm pretty sure 
it'll stay dry and germinate. Maybe. It worked out the front. <laughs>